The best part of mailing card is that the recipient don't know what will pop out from the envelope. One of my favorite type of cards is the pop-up box card. So let's make one together. I just love cute images. Of course I started with stamping. So I inked these lovely images with jet black ink pad to Nina Solar White cardstock. Then I gave them a little heat set to fix the ink on the cardstock. After a heat set, I started the coloring process with Ohuhu markers. For the elephants, I decided to go with lilac cool gray color combo. I am adding a mid-toned purple to the shadows, which I am blending away with a lighter violet color. Next, I am blending the coloring with a light cool gray color. Finally, I repeat the process once more for better contrast. Then I follow the coloring process with flowers, where I am using different color values to pop the greenery out more. For the petals of the daisy, I am using a light warm gray color to add a bit of shadow. Then I blend it with a colorless blender here and there. Then I finish the center of the flowers. For the tulip, I am using a bit of desaturated pink with a touch of violet and it will work perfectly with the violet elephants. Now it's time to color some bubbles. I am using three light colors. A light turquoise, a yellow and the same pink I have used earlier. I am fading the shades over each to get this lovely rainbow hue. Where it needs, I am adding a few flicks with the same colors and I am blending the center of it with colorless blender. Just a super quick coloring for these cute peanuts with light warm browns with a touch of yellow. Now it's time for highlights. I am always using a white pen for highlighting and sometimes a white pencil as well. I think this gives a lot to the colored images. They will get a lovely shiny effect and they pop out more and the pencil gives a bit softer contrast to it. Here is the difference with and without highlights. The images are done and they look so lovely. Next, I created two die cuts with the scalloped box card pop-up die from Mermaid cardstock. I also made a few die cuts with the grass die from the shadow box card park add-on dies with cilantro cardstock. 
Then I run three grass die cuts through my die cut machine with the scalloped box card pop up die to get this scalloped ending on the bottom. Next, I created stitched rectangles with the scalloped box card pop up die from this lovely cardstock from the What's Sewing On Petit Paper Pack. And I also created a banner with the fancy wavy banners die from Ballad Slippers cardstock. When the die cutting was done, I did a quick ink blending on the grass die cuts with Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide ink. Now I have everything ready to finish my box card, so I started to put together the base with strong lump fun double sided adhesive. I added the two pieces together, then I placed the grass die cuts to the wished place as well. Next I removed the parchment paper from the adhesives, then I am precisely closing the card base. I use my bone folder as well for better result. Next, I dress the box with the grass edges. I just adhered them with liquid adhesive to their right place. I repeated the same process with the staged rectangle die cuts. Before I am adhering the colored images to the box, I stamp the sentiment to the banner with watermark ink. After this, I heat emboss it with white embossing powder. I fold it with my bone folder and add it to the front of my card. And last but not the least, the colored images found their place as well. For the standing elephants, I created one more die cut, adding them together with liquid adhesive and placing it to the grass like a cliff. It will hold better and won't bend the cardstock when it will dry. This is how the final card looks like. And if you like the bubbles on this card, then I am pretty sure that you will love my advanced bubble coloring tutorial on this video right here. See you there!